This presentation provides a brief summary of Florida's flounder fishery and its current status, and outlines a proposal for potential regulation changes to help improve the status of the fishery. Flounder is an important inshore fishery that many recreational fishermen participate in. Over the past few years, we've been hearing a variety of concerns about this fishery from anglers and requests for management changes to address those concerns. FWC's Fish and Wildlife Research Institute, FWRI, recently completed a stock status update that shows the fishery is not doing as well as we'd like. Given the public feedback received so far and results of the stock status update, we're seeking additional feedback on the fishery and a potential proposal for updated regulations. There are a number of flounder species found in Florida, but the most common are gulf and southern flounder. Gulf flounder occur along the entire Florida coast, while southern flounder have a more northward distribution and only occur north of the Loxahatchee River on the Atlantic coast near Jupiter, and north of the Caloosahatchee River around Fort Myers on the Florida Gulf Coast. There is a distinct gap in the distribution of southern flounder around the southern tip of Florida. There is limited information in the scientific literature about these two flounder species, but from the information we do have, it is estimated that 50% of gulf flounder are mature between 12 and 13 inches, and 50% of southern flounder are mature at a slightly longer length between 13 and 15 inches. Gulf flounder are typically smaller in comparison, having a maximum size at about 18 inches. Females have been reported to live up to 7 years and males up to 11 years. Southern flounder, however, can reach much longer lengths with an estimated maximum size of 28 inches, but live much shorter lives depending on their geographic location. Southern flounder have been reported to live up to 4 years in the Gulf and 7 years in the Atlantic. Gulf and southern flounder spend most of their life in nearshore waters, typically in estuaries and bays. However, adults will move into offshore waters during the fall and winter to spawn. As you can see on this table, peak spawn varies slightly by species. Adult flounder commonly form pre-spawning aggregates at the beginning of their spawning season in nearshore waters, typically near inlets, before moving offshore. Female gulf flounder spawn almost daily, while southern flounder spawn every 3 to 12 days. In Florida, flounder are managed as a complex, which includes gulf flounder, southern flounder, summer flounder, and fringe flounder, and the current regulations have been in place since 1996, almost 25 years. Currently, the minimum size limit for flounder species is 12 inches total length for all harvesters, and the harvest methods are limited to beach and haul seines, cast nets, hook and line, and spearfishing or gigging. All flounder must also be landed in whole condition. The daily recreational bag limit is 10 flounder per person. Commercial harvesters are required to have a saltwater product license, SPL, with a restricted species endorsement. While there's no commercial trip or possession limits when harvesting flounder using the allowable gear types I mentioned earlier, commercial harvesters are limited to no more than 50 pounds of flounder as incidental bycatch while using other gear types, such as trawls. The Federal Fishery Management Councils do not have fishery management plans for flounder, and since FWC has not extended our regulations, flounder are not currently regulated in federal waters. Statewide landings are primarily composed of southern and gulf flounders. However, summer flounder are caught occasionally in northeast Florida. In Florida, flounder are primarily harvested by hook and line or gig. Since the gig fishery primarily operates at night, Recreational landings from this portion of the fishery may not be captured as well in our traditional fishery surveys as other harvest methods. Flounder are primarily landed in state waters. However, there is an offshore component to this fishery that operates in federal waters. The offshore fishery targets large spawning females in late fall and winter, often by spear. Recreational harvest represented by the green bars on this graph make up the majority of annual landings. On average, recreational landings account for more than 90% of the total harvest each year. Overall, flounder landings since 2000 have fluctuated by year, but since 2012, there has been a general declining trend. As I mentioned earlier, FWRI completed a stock status update for flounder late last year. This update includes data through 2018. 
This is not a full assessment because of the limited biological information available for the flounder species we manage here in Florida, but it uses recreational and commercial data to look at fishery trends and evaluate if the flounder stocks are being harvested at a level that will allow for long-term sustainability. The results from the update showed a general declining trend for flounder statewide and determined that southern flounder is likely overfished and undergoing overfishing. Although we do not have a full stock assessment for Florida flounder, we were able to participate in a South Atlantic multi-state stock assessment of southern flounder last year. This assessment includes biological and catch data from North Carolina through Florida and had very similar results and conclusions as Florida's stock status update. Similarly, some other Gulf states have recently completed stock assessments for flounder, finding again very similar trends and results. Looking at all of the various stock status updates and assessments available, this indicates a potential stock-wide decline of these species in the South Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico. Based on the data we have available, management changes are likely needed for Florida's flounder fishery to be sustainable long term. Specifically, there is a need to shift the current downward trend to an upward trend and improve the overall status of the fishery. We think that this can be done by implementing a combination of regulations to reduce the overall harvest of flounder and conserving more of the large spawning females before and after they move into offshore waters to spawn. This slide provides a snapshot of the suite of rule changes that staff may propose in order to improve the sustainability of Florida's flounder fishery. It includes modifications to both the commercial and recreational fishery. The proposal includes increasing the current size limit from 12 to 14 inches for all harvesters, reducing the recreational bag limit from 10 to 5 fish, implementing a daily commercial vessel limit of 150 fish when using allowable gear, establishing a November closure for all harvesters, and extending all of FWC's flounder regulations into federal waters. There are a few different ways to provide public comment on the flounder fishery and the proposal presented on the previous slide. We will be hosting virtual workshops open to the public on Tuesday, June 2nd and Thursday, June 4th, starting at 6 p.m. During these virtual workshops, there is time designated for questions and public comment. We also have a Saltwater Comments webpage where you can submit comments. The link is listed here in blue. Staff around the state is also virtually attending organized small group meetings. Please contact us directly if you are interested in learning more about these meetings or wish to organize one. Staff tentatively plans to present the feedback gathered in addition to a draft proposal to commissioners at the commission meeting that is scheduled for July 22nd and 23rd. The public is welcome and encouraged to attend commission meetings and speak directly to the commissioners. Thank you for tuning into this recording for the Flounder Fishery and please reach out to staff or go online to submit your public comment.